Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. We're here in Las Vegas at ServiceNow Knowledge 18. My name is Carlos Casanova. I'm here with Kirsty McGowan, my co-host. Hi, you Carlos. And Alan Lineone from ServiceNow, uh, Chief Carlos. Technology Officer. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. So, um, been busy, I guess, uh, <laughs> for quite a while, but you know, more recently, <laughs> in the last week or so, you know, an acquisition, uh, big announcements today from a keynote, tomorrow, you get a lot of stuff coming on. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? You know, the, the recent acquisition that you guys uh, did. I mean, it's uh, pretty pretty significant. Yeah, we are always exploring how to do things like machine learning and natural language. And what we found is that people want to use voice and language and things mm -hmm. like chat as part of a workflow. And natural language processing and being able to, you know, take speech and turn it into text is something that a lot of people do, and we outsource that and we do that through our workflow. But the understanding of that natural language, really understanding the context of what it means and what it means in terms of getting work done is something that we wanted to leverage. And our acquisition of Parlo is, is where we're headed in that particular space. So what you're going to see us do with that acquisition is bring it onto our platform, make it part of the native capability of the platform, and then let our customers leverage it in ways that we probably haven't even thought of yet. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. They'll, that they'll come out and surprise you. Oh, they always do. Yeah, yeah that sounds like, I mean, uh, you know, really just opening up a, you know, a whole new world to, uh, to what you guys are doing. Well, I mean, voice is really something that we know that people have been dying for, for 25 yeah. years to interact right. with computers mm -hmm. via. Right. And I think we're finally at that point where we're starting to see the, the tipping point, and we're excited to be part of it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, so other big news in the DevOps field, obviously DevOps has been the buzzword around <laughs> IT for, for a few years now. So, that's right. So where's ServiceNow going with, with DevOps now? Yeah, I mean, DevOps is such a big space. Yeah, and if it's huge. We like to say if you talk to 10 people, you'll get 15 answers. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, so in our world, what we try to think about is an enterprise DevOps mm -hmm. workflow. Mm -hmm. And the reason we, we've entered this space is because we found a lot of our customers were using our platform to drive a workflow. Right. And that mm -hmm. workflow was, we want to plan a software app, we want to build the app, mm -hmm. we want to test it, deploy it, and then operate it. Yep. Yep. And they had actually built that flow on ServiceNow. They had built it on ServiceNow natively, and they'd also integrated to a lot of the popular DevOps tools right. out there, whether it's Jenkins mm -hmm. or Git or Docker mm -hmm. or New Relic in the right. app space. Sure. And we thought that packaging up that workflow and then providing visibility into it is something that our customers are really going to like. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, you had mentioned, Carlos, yeah. where we're going. Tomorrow, in one of the demos we're going to do in the afternoon is you can see a live demo of this that's coming in the London release. Yeah. So there'll be an agile planning board for planning sprints and backlog oh, wow, planning. That's great. You'll see that integration mm -hmm. into Git and Jenkins, and you actually get that whole workflow visibility right on the platform. It's something we're pretty excited about. Yeah, that's right. I mean that's a huge, you know, a huge, yeah, opportunity mm. to really to expand your reach even more. So yeah, I mean we used to sort of canonically we always started out back in the IT space and we sort of been expanding into other areas of the enterprise space. One of the areas we hadn't necessarily mm. broached into aggressively before was the app dev space. Right. And yeah. that's where we're going to try and help. We're going to try and let IT and app dev work together, right. sort of the, the classic dev and ops. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, that's what we're excited about. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you know we had Janine on earlier. And yeah. You know, we talked about you know the friction that happens, right? And it's interesting how you mentioned that. You know, I've got clients that work in that space, and we're trying to you know some other service now, and obviously we have to use it for that flow. Right. But we have the rest of the flow sort of off the platform. That's right. Yeah. And it, the big thing when you're trying to reduce friction yeah. is not to have to jump through yes. four different tools and then move across. So well, it sounds it, like giving a great opportunity going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one thing that's interesting about this space is you do have these kind of different worlds. You have the developer world where you're working in Slack and you got your Git yeah. commits and you're in your IDE. But then you have the IT world where they want to know, hey, have those guys done yet? And can mm -hmm. I maybe release it? And maybe I want to go through change yeah. management as part of that process. Yep. So you kind of want to let devs be devs, yeah. but then you also want to let the ops guys yep. get the visibility and control. Right. And that's really what we're trying to bring is yeah. have a workflow that brings us two together. Yeah, br you bring them a little bit closer and yeah. Add, yeah, get rid of some of that friction that's exactly. between the two of them. Exactly right. Exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. So the next thing we wanted to ask you about was virtual agent. Yes. So tell us a bit more about that. Yes. We've, heard, we've heard a bit along the way, but it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, it is. It's really exciting. So, again, virtual agent mm -hmm. chatbots yep. are things that people are talking about a lot. And we wanted to be able to let our customers communicate with the platform about the work they want to get done almost via various types of chat clients. Mm -hmm. So whether it's our chat client, whether it's a chat client we can put in somebody yeah. else's mobile app, or whether it's things like Slack and Teams and WhatsApp and other mm -hmm. app clients that people won't want to chat to us on. Yep. So there's one part of it. There's the actually connecting our instance for each customer with some chat client out there. Yes. And then there's the second part, mm -hmm. which is once that English string or 
particular string of text has come in, how do you parse it and what do you do with mm -hmm. it? What's the conversation that moves forward? Right. What's the digital IVR, if you will, sort of mm -hmm. thing? Right. And that's what we're going to demo tomorrow as well, right. is that, that virtual conversation designer. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it in the morning and then we're also going to do it in the afternoon live on stage. So yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. mm -hmm. So, and I, I don't know if maybe I'm jumping too far ahead, but I mean, you know, we started off with <clears throat> natural language. And we're talking about chat and kind of going the opposite direction. Am I jumping too far forward to seeing a convergence maybe in a, a few years? You know, I, I think a lot of us like to look forward and a lot of us like to see where we're going to go. So are you asking me is, would speech eventually be able to drive a conversation? Uh, that seems like a logical next step. Not, no promises, no delivery yeah. dates, no, but, sure, sure. but we're definitely thinking about it. Yeah. Right. I mean, well, we have, I, we're like a week and a half into the acquisition, mm. but you know, right. at this point, everything's possible. Right, and, and it's, I mean, because obviously that is a natural progression, mm. you know, and it's yeah. not something that you know, uh, is gonna be tomorrow, obviously. But you know, I just, I think about it, you know, when we talk about friction, we talk about things going quicker, especially, right. you know, if we, especially get into the handicap type of space mm. and we have the language and the translation, it sounds like you're, you're really putting in place a lot of key components mm. to enable even faster throughput, you know, uh, better cadence through the, through the machinery. Yeah, I mean, if you think about what ServiceNow does at, at its essence, is it takes work from the start to finish. Right. Whether that work is a software development process, whether that work is an IT case, whether that work is an HR onboarding. Yeah. If we can add natural language understanding to that, yeah. add the ability for people to chat with us via mm -hmm. a chat bot or an agent that they have on the mobile device or on their desktop, to us, as long as you can get to that unit of work and make it go faster, we think we've done the right job. Right, right. Yeah. In, in the, you know, we, uh, we were talking about the HR component, making life easier for the employees. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I just see all of this really converging on you know, the simplicity for the employee, mm -hmm. um, opening up opportunities for employers to, to get work done faster, whether it's the internally or the products they're putting out the door. That's right. Yeah, we, we, we definitely want to help as part of that workflow make the employee experience better. Yeah. And, you know, I think John said it in his earlier keynote um, yesterday that we people are sort of stuck back in the, the 90s, you know, yeah. they finally want to have that, you know, the, the classic is Uber-like, Yelp-like experience yeah. inside the enterprise. The way we used to say it is, you know, at home you're on a mobile device, you're in 2018, you're doing the right thing, you go to work yeah. and you're, you're at home you, and you go to work, you're in 1996. You're back to 1996. Yeah. And well, yeah. the reason we picked 96 is that's when Outlook came out. Right? Yes. And so oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's yeah. We're all living yeah. Outlook, right? Yeah, a lot we're of places are still stuck there. And, yeah, yeah. you know, we think that's finally starting to change. You see yeah. what we're doing with agent workspace, you're seeing what we're doing mm -hmm. with agent intelligence, yeah. you're yeah. seeing where we're changing the design methodology mm -hmm. for those enterprise apps. And you know, I think time's turning. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, probably I mean, about time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and other things we, we all went through the nineties, mm -hmm. so we're okay with the nineties, but not in the in those, yeah, uh, not not in those ways. Maybe just the music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There that's we go. True. So I guess um, you know, what's what's in the future? I mean, you know, it sounds like again, you you're really putting in place such foundational elements mm -hmm. for so much growth. Uh, you know, it's, it looks pretty wild on uh, what, what's ahead of you. Yeah, there's a lot of things we're thinking about for the future. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always trying to figure out what portions of work with inside the enterprise make most sense for us to move into. We're looking at exploring things and a variety of different things. You know, pick mm -hmm. your favorite buzzwords, whether it's IoT or blockchain yeah. or yeah. other sorts of things. You know, they're clearly yeah. on our mind. Mm -hmm. They're clearly things we're exploring. We don't really have any necessarily plans on those sure. areas yeah. right now. Yeah. But there are things that they're technology trends, mm. they're breakthroughs that are happening in the industry, and we'd be sort of remiss not to take advantage of that, that expertise and that excitement. Yeah, that's well, awesome. The future obviously is very exciting for ServiceNow and for ServiceNow's customers. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank hope so. you very much for your time today. It's been thank an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.